Welcome to How to Program. This is episode number two, and just a warning that our program is best viewed in sequence, and if you haven't started with episode one yet, you can click here and go back to the start. Now, episode two is going to cover several things, memory, variables, and program control. So let's define what memory is. Memory is the part of a computer in which data can be stored for later use. And a variable is just an element or a feature or something that can vary or can change. That's why we say it is variable. In a computer program, more specifically, a variable is an area of memory that can hold a value, like a a number or some piece of text, something like that. As this value can change during the execution of the program, we call it a variable. So memory could be seen as the box in this metaphor here with this picture. Um, And a variable is one slot in that box. So a variable is not going to hold all of the data in your program. It's going to hold one piece of information in your program. And that's kind of the point. And uh, it's also possible that this value will change uh, as your program runs. That's why it's called a variable. Now, what kind of things can we put inside a variable or store inside a variable? Well, you can put round numbers like, you know, 2, 7, 29, whatever. Uh, You can put numbers with a decimal point or a fractional number is also called, like 1.2 or 6.5. Uh, also negative numbers, minus 4.6, etc. You can put a single letter or symbol, also usually called a character uh, in uh, computer speak or in, in program speak, uh, like the letter A, the letter B, or the symbol equal. That would, each of these individually would be a single character. And then you can put a series of characters or symbols. Uh, we call this a string, uh, like the phrase hello or who. Um, these would be, these pieces of text would be called strings. They're just a series of characters. And uh, we could also put a single value representing whether something is true or false called a Boolean. And we're going to go into uh, what a Boolean is just a little bit. Um, A Boolean is a single value representing whether a statement is true or false. This was named after a British mathematician named George Boole, who worked on logic problems and a branch of mathematics dealing with logic problems. Um, So we named this thing after him, and it's just a value that can say whether something is true or not. Um, Here's some examples of uh, statements and the Boolean representing whether they're true or not. Uh, You are watching a video right now. Yes, that is true. You are watching this video. Um, You are a giant pink elephant. No, I think that's false. I don't think you're a giant pink elephant. Um, Six is greater than four. Well, that's always going to be true in mathematics. 22 is equal to 21. Nope, that's not right. So that's false. And my name is Paul. Uh, Well, my name doesn't happen to be Paul, so that would be false. Now, the next thing we're going to cover is called program control. And program control is a way to direct which instructions uh, the processor should run in your program next based on a given condition. A condition is similar to what we were just looking at in examples of Booleans like, you know, is this thing greater than six? Is this thing blue, for example? That would be a condition. Um, But we usually express it as a statement. We say, this thing is blue, and then the computer says, true or false? and that's a condition. Um, Then this is also sometimes referred to as um, flow of control, control flow, control statements. Um, These are just different names for the same thing. This is just a way to direct your program to run a particular set of instructions or another. Now, let's take an example uh, with a little program to calculate ticket prices for a movie theater. Um, The rules are, If the person is under five years old, the ticket is free. If the person is under 12 years old, they get a discount. The ticket is $10, and uh, the price is $15 for everyone else. We also have to calculate sales tax of 8% at the end on the price, whichever the price of the ticket is, $10, $15, or $0 in the case where the ticket is free. Now, just a reminder, 
um, a processor, our, our simple example of a processor has these following instructions at this point. If you watched episode one, you will remember them. Add for adding numbers, sub for subtracting numbers, multiply, mall, dividing numbers, div, out is output something or give a result out, uh, and res is the result of the last operation of the line above uh, where we put res. Okay, so now we're going to modify this a little bit. Um, out, we're going to see output something and end the program. Like when we see the instruction out, that's the end of the program. Um, var1 is going to be the value contained in the program variable number one. And var2 is going to be the value contained in the program variable number two. Let's just assume there's var1 and var2. Those are the only variables we have available to us. And those are the ones we're going to use. And if is going to be a, an instruction to the to the processor to say, execute the next instruction, like the next line, basically, if the condition I'm writing is true, otherwise you're going to skip one line to the next instruction after. Uh, this will become more clear in the example, but hopefully it's not too complicated. Okay, so here's how we're going to write our ticket price program. VAR1 is going to contain the person's age. VAR2 will contain the ticket price. We're going to look at the age first to decide whether to charge zero dollars or free, uh, ten dollars or fifteen dollars. We're going to store this value of the price of the ticket uh, in VAR2 and then we're going to calculate the tax which is eight percent which turns out it's the same as multiplying by 1.08. Uh, that's the same as applying eight percent to the price and we're going to output the result. So let's take a look at a simple way we could write this program. So if VAR1 is less than 5, and remember VAR1 is the age, so if the age is less than 5, then VAR2 equals 0. So VAR2 is the ticket price, right? Uh, line 3 says if VAR1 is less than 12, then VAR2 equals 10. So if the age is less than 12, then we want the ticket price to be 10. Uh, line 5 says if VAR1 is greater than or equal to 12, so anyone else above or equal to 12 years old, we're going to charge them $15 for the ticket price. Line seven says we're going to multiply that by 1.08, which is the same as applying 8% tax. And line eight says output the result of the last operation, which is line seven, which is essentially the price with the tax added to it. Simple enough. However, there's what we call a bug. A bug is an issue. This isn't working the way we want it to work. Um, the origin of the term bug is actually that uh, in old, old computers, they were, you know, big as rooms in the 40s and 50s, you know, um, every once in a while, like a little bug would creep in into the circuits and it would like fry something and then the computer wouldn't work right. So that's where the term bug comes from. And it just means something isn't working right. There's, an, there's a mistake or a problem inside the computer or the, in this case, in the code, right? And so... Um, I don't know if you spotted the error. Um, if you're very clever with this, you might be able to spot it. Um, but let's take a look. So actually, if the age is less than 5, the price is going to be set to 10. This is wrong. We, we want it to be free or 0 if the age is less than 5. But let's look at why this is. Um, the program runs line by line. Remember this. So it's going to run line 1 and say, if var1 is less than 5, uh, then the ticket price is set to zero. This is correct so far. But then it automatically goes to line three where it says if var1 is less than 12, well, let's take an example. Let's say the age is four. Well, the age, if it, you know, if the age is four, it's less than five, but it's also less than 12, which means line four is also going to get run. This is the problem. This is the bug, basically. We, we don't want this to run unless... Um, Essentially, the age is, uh, you know, we only want it to run if the age is between 5 and 12, basically. But we didn't tell the computer that. That's not what we told the computer. So how do we fix this? Um, well, basically, we should be able to exit out. You know what I mean? Like, like, we should be able to pull out the code for each of the conditions, like less than 5 years old, less than 12 years old, anyone else. And, and, then, and then after we've done the code for that, which is to set the ticket price to the right thing, then we should right away go to the tax calculation like just go okay we're done let's you know we, we've dealt with figuring out the ticket price here let's go right to the tax calculation um this can be accomplished by creating what i'm going to call blocks of code which is one or more lines of code that are isolated like these blocks are going to be out from the main sort of flow of the program and uh they're going to be able to run by themselves before we go back to the 
quote unquote main flow of the instructions, like the main series of instructions, right? So these are going to be like little sets of instructions on the side that we can run and then go back to the main uh, program, if that makes sense. It'll make more sense when I show you the example, hopefully. Um, we're going to add one new instruction um, to our processor that our processor can do. We're going to call this go to. And this is just going to make the processor go to or jump to a, a particular line number on our instructions. You know how they all have numbers on the lines. Uh, if we say go to three, it's going to go, OK, next instruction three, right? So it, it's just a way of like jumping around in our code here and telling the processor to do that. So this is the ticket price fixed. Um, and let's run through this. So let's let's take our example again where the age is four. Um, so we're going to go to line one. And line one is going to say, if the age is less than five, run the next line. Well, this is correct. The age is less than five. So we're going to run the next line. The next line says, go to nine. OK, that means go to line nine and run the program. Continue running the program line by line from line nine. So we're going to do that. Now line nine says the ticket price variable two is zero. So it's going to set that. And then it's going to run the next line. And line 10, you'll notice, says go to seven. What is seven? Well, seven is the tax calculation. And seven actually comes after all the other calculations of ticket price. So that works for our purposes here. You know, that's what we want to do. We want to, we, that's what we said to fix the bug. We want it to just calculate the price, and then go straight to the tax calculation. And this is essentially what it does. Boom, we go right there. So this is what we said. We wanted to, you know, we said that we wanted to go straight to the tax calculation after setting the ticket price. And this is essentially what this is accomplishing. So we go to line 7. And when line 7 executes the multiplication of 0 by 1.08, well, 0 times anything is always 0. So the result. RES here, the res uh, on the right hand side, you can see that's zero. And the output is zero. And this is correct. If a person's age is four, we want the ticket price to be free. So that's what we accomplished. You can also, um, I didn't put every single scenario, but you know, you could also run it for someone who's 11 and see what would happen, or someone who's, you know, 14 and see what would happen. Uh, you'll find that this works in all of the scenarios we wanted with these things. And as you'll notice, so what I called blocks earlier, little blocks of code, um, line 9 and 10 would be one block. Line 11 and 12 would be a second block because they're just a set of instructions that are kind of off to the side out of the main flow because you can see the program ends at line 8. As soon as we hit line 8, it's done, right? So we kind of jump out of that and then back to the main line of the program with these little blocks of code. And it's kind of a neat trick, right? Now, um, this is a very sort of silly example. Uh, and programmers are probably going to comment and go, oh my god, you're teaching programming this way. This is totally crazy. But there's a reason behind my madness, because no one teaches programming this way. And I think it's a shame, because um, this is how a processor actually works. This is, this is exactly what a processor does. It goes line by line, instruction by instruction. And if you, if you don't know that that's, the f that's a fact, I'm sorry, but that's a fact. That's how it works. Now, um, of course, when you're typing real code, quote unquote, um, you don't have to deal with the line numbers. You don't have to, to, to deal with like jumping around in the code to which line number. And if the line number changes, you have to update everything. Like all of this is taken care of for you. Um, you know, uh, programmers being lazy people, um, they have taken care of all of this so that you don't have to think about it. So don't worry if you think this is kind of scary. It's not. This is just to have a really, really simple example of what a program can look like and how it actually does work uh, in real life on a processor at a very low level, at the processor level. Like this is very, very deep here. Um, but, you know, just as a, as a bit of sort of trivia, or random information that you probably won't run into for a long time. But um, the current line number that the, that the processor is running at is called the program counter. And this is a real thing. And every processor has a program counter for, the, for where it's actually at and in, in what it's running. Um, and this is how it keeps track of where, where it's at and where it needs to run next and what it needs to do. Um, now, go to instructions obviously just change the value of the program counter. It just says, you know, oh, you thought you were in line seven? Nope, now you're in line 21. You know, like, and this is how it jumps around. Um, 
Now, this type of code that we just worked with is, is usually referred to as machine language or machine code. Um, almost no one ever writes this by hand anymore. Um, we have you know, uh, other types of code that are much more friendly to a human, that are much more easy for a human to understand and, and, and read, uh, and that's what we use. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of the introduction to uh, program flow. Now, um, I, I touched upon Booleans a little bit, but there's a lot more information about Booleans that you should know as a programmer. Uh, so what we're going to do is, in the next lesson, we're just going to cover that uh, very much in depth and uh, sort of explore the world of Booleans. And so I hope to see you for that. If you enjoyed watching this, I encourage you to subscribe to our channel below and like this video. You can also like us on Facebook and get alerted as soon as a new episode comes out.